1887 in Philadelphia. He was one of seven children. He was right in the middle with his twin sister. And uh, his dad was a businessman. And right from the start, Wharton wanted to be an artist. Specifically, he wanted to be a painter. So he went to a number of art schools in the area, finishing at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia. He gets out of the school in 1910 and quickly learns that nobody wants to buy the work of an unknown painter. So he needs a job to pay the bill while his painting style develops and he becomes famous enough that he can get lots of money with his work. And he gets it uh, first at a Philadelphia newspaper and then at the Victor Talking Machine Company in Camden where he converted photographs into advertising posters. Now that job paid very well. So when he met a young lady, Letty Dofer, whose dad owned a butcher shop at the Reading Terminal Market in Philadelphia, he thought he's making plenty of money he can afford to get married they do Wharton comes back from his honeymoon goes into work and finds out they no longer needed him they had a mechanical process that displaced them it could convert photographs into advertising posters directly and Wharton said well hey that's okay I didn't really like what I was doing anyway I was doing illustration work I want to be a painter I may as well work at this painting thing full time they wanted to stay close to Philadelphia specifically they wanted a farm so they could raise fruits and vegetables so if his painting style took a while to develop, at least they wouldn't starve. And on the way up to the farmhouse, Wharton sees it's got a great big cherry tree in the yard, so big that two men could put their hands around it. Even today in Pennsylvania, it's hard to find a cherry tree that big. So Wharton basically uh, tells the realtor, I'll buy the property. And the realtor says, well, don't you want to see the house? And Wharton said, no, nah, it's okay. You know, it's a farm. I'm looking for a farm. It's got that beautiful cherry tree. And I'll probably make the, change the house anyway. I can make it something that really suits me. So he didn't let me buy the farm. And uh, he probably spent more time as a farmer than he did as a painter in his early days as he's working on his style. Time goes by and uh, his style just wasn't coming. Not only did uh, customers not care for his style, critics didn't care for his style, but worst of all, Wharton didn't like the way his style, painting style was developing. In 1919, Letty, who had been looking for ways to help uh, Wharton get some money for the family, learns that they're giving a course in organic education in Fairhope, Alabama. So the whole family went down. At that time, they had just one child, their daughter Mary. They eventually wound up with three, two daughters and a son. So they go down to Fairhope. Letty takes her course. Wharton's while he's there, while he is there, does watercolors and paintings there. And at the end of Letty's course, the director of Fairhope asked Wharton, would you like to put on a show what you made down here? Wharton was more than happy to do that. He goes into the little town of Fairhope looking for frames for his pictures. Couldn't get any frames. They didn't sell frames in Fairhope. So he gets a set of wood carving tools and he carves his frames. The show goes on and the big hit of the show wasn't his watercolors or his paintings. It was his frames. First indication, maybe the guy should have studied sculpture as well as painting when he was in art school. In any case, uh, he also met a number of writers while he was in Fairhope, one of whom, Mary Marcy, asked him to help her illustrate a book she was writing for children with woodcuts. Now, Wharton hadn't done woodcuts before, but, you know, he had done frames, and he's an artist. How hard can a woodcut be to carve, right? He can take it. He can do it. So he takes the commission. He needed the money. They go come back to Paoli. Wharton's working on his commission for the woodcuts, for the books, and uh, he's still doing his paintings and his watercolors. He's beginning to use the wooden uh, tools, the carving tools that he had gotten in Fairhope to make small wooden sculptures. And he even makes furniture for his own house. And interestingly enough, as time goes by, customers would come look at his ostensibly to look at his paintings and watercolors and instead they'd see his sculptural work and instead of his paintings they would buy his frames his small sculptures even the furniture he made for his own house now by 1926 Warren's a little frustrated because his painting style just wasn't coming in customers didn't care for it he thought you know if I can't paint the way customers like 
maybe I'll give up painting forever and be a full-time sculptor. And that's what he decided to do. Now, at first, he tries using his barn near his house as a sculpting studio, but he wants to make bigger things than he could do in his barn. So he gets some money from a grandmother, and he bought the property on top of his, on top of the hill here, and he built what's on top of the hill here over a period of 40 years. Now, as I said, this site is a National Historic Landmark for Architecture. Let me show you why. 